Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. You know, one of the most exciting things about being in this space is to see what the developers develop. And we have something that just happened in the last 24 hours that is going to radically change this space. But first, I want to just take you back a little bit. This is an article that Evan Schwartz, the senior software engineer at Ripple, he, which he held that position from August 2013 to December 2019. He's currently uh, on the board of COIL, but when he wrote this back in 2018, it was really a magnificent article to get us thinking about what would it look like to have a universal network for sending value independent of any company or any currency. What would that look like? And here is part of the graphic that was in that article, an example of paying in one currency to another, where the user could send BTC and the recipient would automatically receive Ether. Well, I want to introduce you to three developers who are changing this space. Meet Tristan, Ali, and Weetzi. They are at XRPL Labs, and this team of developers are doing applications for and on the XRP ledger. And just about 24 hours ago, the live open beta called SUM, which is how it is pronounced, so I understand from a video of an introduction video that I watched, this just launched and it pretty much gives us that capability among other things. It's an application with a flexible payment flow, less prone to mistakes and very user friendly. So when you go to Wheatswin's Twitter site, you can find this 11 minute article or video that I think is all you need to watch to be prepared to download that application. Because after watching it, I did so, sent the guys a tip, and I was done in all about 15 minutes. So in this video, he talks about how you can send a payment in euro and then it goes through the decentralized exchange that sits in the middle and it does the conversion for you so that the person who asks you to pay wants to have dollars they can so if you only have xrp for example and the recipient who gets that value sent across this app has requested to have dollars it's possible and there are more options coming. So some, which is currently in beta, you'll want to be careful not to send all of your XRP there, but I think sending just a little bit, the minimum 20, of course, to uh, activate the wallet, but also send just a little bit so that you can play with it. And uh, you'll be able to give the feedback and information and, e and even make some feature requests. This is their page where you can look through the FAQs, you can look through the developer documents, you can also send them a tip if you like. And the features request, it's interesting. It seems that as of right now, and I think that uh, there's just about 4,000 apps downloaded in I think it was less than 12 hours. It's amazing. And if you have a look, the feature that has been uh, requested the most so far is to have that dark mode. And I think a lot of people like to have that because of the visual appeal to it, as well as it saves the battery. So this is, uh, this is kind of fun to read through the comments that people are making. So like I said, it is just something that I set up and you don't need a destination tag. That was the only one, that was the only thing that kind of threw me where I took pause to wonder if I was doing it right. And it just took about wow, a minute for my XRP to go from one wallet to my sum wallet and then I was able to send those guys a tip. The whole process took about 15 minutes. Yeah, I feel so smart. <laughs> so, I am 
just going to take you back even to February 2020. And this is when there was a very good article by uh, Warren Paul Anderson. You know, in the spirit of building and keeping to the magic of what developers do in this space, uh, we learned that it was a quest from spring to see if they would be able to, by attending the Ethereum gathering, which turned a lot of heads, like, <laughs> what is this business that Ripple is doing at an Ethereum gathering? Well, just as XRP is a neutral settlement bridge currency and RippleNet is an interoperable rail, a payment rail, uh, Spring is also seeking to be open with protocols and standards, and they want to build a bridge between XRP and Ethereum. And I think everybody remembers this article. And what you might not have known is that they launched a challenge that has a bounty. This is the bounty site called Gitcoin. And Warren said that uh, Spring is thinking of how to make that bridge between XRP and Ethereum and the East ERC-20 tokens. And the bridge is important since XRP is one of the most liquid cryptocurrencies in the world. So when we take a look at this, they had actually three different, uh, three different bounties here. One for the Interledger protocol support for the ERC-20 on the layer two network. And then there was a thousand dollar bounty for the Interledger protocol support for Ethereum on the layer two network. And then the last one is uh, XRP, Ethereum and ERC-20 bridge over the Interledger protocol. And if we take a look at the one that had three applications, which is interesting, they give it in the description. So what if David Schwartz, the chief architect of the XRP ledger, wanted to send XRP to Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum, but Vitalik only wanted to receive his Ethereum. So this is where this space is evolving to. And some is getting us ever, ever so closer. Binance. CZ is building. This guy's seriously building. When he gave his 2020 New Year message, he talked about how he did 19 acquisitions in 2019 and was looking forward to two big ones that were going to come in 2020. And this is Yogita Katri. She broke a story today. And it's a big one. While everyone else was sleeping, she was working. You know, I've, I have mentioned her at least twice on videos before. She is one of, she is one of the hardest working and the best in the space of journalism. So she, uh, broke this story. It happened to be on, uh, the block. She also writes for The Economist in India and also one more, one more outfit. I just don't remember what it is right now, but Binance is set to acquire the coin market cap and the deal could be worth as much as $400 million. That is big news and a big acquisition. And I am sure that uh, everybody has some opinion on this, but it's very exciting to see people building. All right, everybody, I'm jumping to some fluff. So this is the oldest restaurant, a Japanese restaurant in Paris. And it's called Takara. I think it was established in 1958. And I just had come across it in doing some other research. And I thought, this is interesting. Uh, what do they do? Ah, so they, they bring you a treasure box of seafood. Looks great, doesn't it? And then I got to thinking, oh, I must talk about the little Paris of Tokyo. And this is a neighborhood in the northeast area in the center of Tokyo, and it's called Kagura Zaka. It's really quite special. It was once the outer edge of the Edo Castle, so it was located just over the moat 
at that time. It's renowned for its geisha houses, and it still has a few today. And the largest concentration of French eateries, bakeries, and cheese shops are in this neighborhood. And some of the famous and old drote, which are found in these winding back streets that are only accessible by foot. I just want to show you a couple of photographs. It's really beautiful and it's been maintained in its traditional old style. And should you go to this little back street here, which is next to these drotes, which by the way are the restaurants that are just the pinnacle of Japanese food. But there is something that is maybe a little different. It is a Kakarazakura Sushi Academy all you can eat buffet, sort of buffet style, sort of, not a hundred percent buffet for just 3,000 yen, which is like a little less than $29 US for 120 minutes. It is probably the best value if you are a lover of sushi. Yeah, it's got that cost effectiveness that is hard to beat. The neighborhood, the location, the restaurant, the quality of sushi served. In fact, they, they boast that they have 50 different kinds of sushi at all times. So it's one of those places I think that no matter what your taste is and your favorites are, you can do it at this place. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.